Whoop whoop. Alright, what up though? Welcome to the fucking show. Thanks for fucking tuning in. Um, you just were watching Cooking Mima. Now you're joining me from Ross TV, Ross, as the motherfucking host tonight for the show. No seconds. So tonight, um, John Martin Scripps, the tourist from hell, is uh, the serial killer. And you're about to be schooled on who the fuck that is and what kind of fucking fucked up heinous shit he's done and uh, his last meal was a pizza and uh, hot chocolate so it sounds pretty fucking baller to me let's take a look at the pizza this is a pizza from uh, Papa John's and um, I looked up and could not find or could not confirm, confirm or deny uh, what type of pizza that he got exactly. So I just got like, this is a Philly pizza from Papa John's. And uh, I want to try some of this hot cocoa actually. It looks pretty good. This is hot cocoa made with milk. Uh, whole milk heated up in the microwave with uh, Hershey's cocoa powder, sugar, and whatever else went into the Hershey's cocoa. Mmm, that's delicious, actually. Very sweet and tasty. Let's check out some comments. Poop soup on a cat. Whoop, whoop. Hey. Ross better get turned up. Team turn up. Whoop whoop. Yeah, so fucking I'm excited, yeah? So let's uh, also divulge some more about this fellow. Um, John Martin Scripps, the tourist from hell. No violent history to him. Uh, he did a lot of petty crimes as a juvenile delinquent. His father died when he was fairly young, a young boy. Uh, we'll look up some wiki stuff about him here in a minute or two. Um, but yeah, no violent history coming up. Um, basically, through the prison system, he learned the skills of how to be a butcher and then he dismembered the people that he killed. Um, let's fucking get some pizza on the plate. Papa Jones always comes with this garlic butter sauce and it's like fucking banging on the fucking pizza here and they always throw these little peppers in the box. Mmm. That's pretty good. Oh, fucking delicious. The Philly pizza has sort of like a ranch based sauce. Obviously cheese. They're like green peppers. Philly steak, I guess. Strips of steak meat. Okay, so, um...
basically in Singapore area, these at this um, port, a duffel bag of rotten legs came washing up on shore, launched an investigation, and um, they traced it back to this hotel room. And basically, he convinced people at like airports to be like, hey, I'm from, I'm an outsider too to like the Singapore region. He'd mostly target uh, white people. And uh, it, it was in Singapore, uh, Bangkok region. So they're a long way from home. So he would target them. And these people, I don't know why they would go along with this. Um, would agree to like go get a hotel at the same place like he'd get a room next door and like this one couple that he killed later down the line he had a breakfast that he had planned to, he went into the room and greeted them hey and he's got a taser that he carried on him and he would shock them and incapacitate them then bludgeon them with a hammer and then he had a pair of professional like butcher shears and like knew how to like cut like a butcher like efficiently like their limbs off in like the uh, tub of the hotel room and as the blood washed down the drain despite his you know washing the blood down the drain he still got like blood drippings like driplets on the toilet seat and in some spots so when like the uh, Singapore police investigators came they found that and matched the blood to some stuff and um Let's see. So, I want to show what he looks like here. I don't know how well you'll be able to see this or not. That's what he looks like. And yeah, he was, uh, went to prison for like smuggling heroin. Uh, he had like a million dollars worth of heroin, like three pounds of heroin. And then he was trying to smuggle it in those airports or somewhere and then they caught him and uh, went to prison and um, he, he was on his best behavior and like uh, he got upgraded to this other prison place because he was on he was like a model like prisoner and wasn't violent or anything bad and so then he got the job in the in the prison of being a butcher these people that had been being a butcher for like 20 years trained him and he said oh, I would like to be a butcher when I get out of here and then um, he took those skills basically to steal the identity of the people that he killed at airports he just started killing people at airports um, some other part of his backstory is that he traveled when he was younger and he went to Mexico and uh, traveled with the money because as a del juvenile delinquent teenager he would like steal shit and get money and um, he had like run-ins with the law from like stealing and like dumb shit after his dad died or something like that and uh, he used the money that he had saved up from stealing and shit to travel and he went to Mexico and met his wife, Maria something. I've got her full name in here somewhere, I think. But uh, him and Maria got married, but he just couldn't stop being like a thief and like getting money. And then he was out on home leave from prison and he was going to be done with his sentence for um, coming up very soon. But while he was out on home leave, he stole again and then went to prison some more and his wife, Maria... The Mexican lady was fed up and she left him for another man who was a police officer who actually went on to um, guard the uh, royal family. So complete, like, like left him for like, a, a, you know, like the rule of law fucking kind of a guy versus his like life of crime and uh he was so mad about his wife leaving him, Maria, that he wanted to kill her, but he didn't kill her. Um, but so then he had this, th he just, um, he traveled to Singapore and uh, murdered one person, a, a man, 
uh, that he met at a hotel or met at the airport and then convinced the guy to, to, for them to share a hotel room for costs or some reason and then um, he killed the man and threw his uh, dismembered body parts in a duffel bag out into uh, Singapore River or something to that effect. And here's some information about um, while he was in prison about the people that trained him. Okay, so promoted to the position of butcher under the training of James Quigley, a prison caterer with more than 20 years experience and another inmate only known as Ginger, who had been a professional butcher. They taught him how to dismember and remove the bone from animals after slaughtering them. Martin performed this, his duties with such efficiency that he once told Quigley he wished to open a butcher's shop after his release. Um, Maria Piler was the name of his wife. Fifteen, year old, fifteen years old when uh, dude met her, she was, and uh, married her when she was seventeen, apparently, and he was twenty-one years old. So. That's what's going on with that. And, um, yeah, he committed burglaries. Maria filed for divorce. She went on to marry the policeman guy I was telling you about, and uh, he got a job later protecting the royal family. He wanted to kill her, but he didn't. He traveled the world. Uh, he was a heroin south uh, running person in Southeast Asia, arrested for drug trafficking. A million dollars worth of heroin in Singapore, uh, uh, 1.5 kilos of heroin, or three pounds of it. Um, model prisoner, good behavior, transferred to different prison, taught how to be a butcher there. And um, on home leave, uh, he was left on home leave because he was, for good behavior, is no longer considered a risk. And his mom was super adamant about not letting him get out. His mother knew otherwise. She said, do not let him out this week and he's going to sell his television and all of his stuff so he can like get out of town while he's out on home leave from prison. The, the, his mom warned the prison system that he would try to make an escape and sure enough he did. And they, He went looking for his ex-wife um, and this happened, the murder of the first murder that they found, like these severed legs in a duffel bag, came floating ashore in Singapore. This happened in 1995. The floating legs found off the pier. And um, the guy's identity that he stole was, his name was uh, Simon Davis. A real person named Simon Davis, he killed him. The guy he met at the airport and was like, hey, let's split a hotel room. And then... Um, bludgeons him, shocks him, incapacitates him, bludgeons him, and then uh, cuts off his body parts in the bathtub. His name is Simon Davis, so after killing Simon Davis, he meticulously took his credit cards and IDs and, like, uh, made it his, and then so he took on Simon Davis's um, identity and then siphoned a lot of his money out and spent it. He went shopping or something to that effect, as I remember in the documentary. Um, went shopping on Simon Davis's dime. Big time. Now this hot chocolate's fucking quite a tasty treat. Let's check out the comments, see what the fuck's going on. Oh, Ross is one of those Papa John's type ninjas. Now drink the candle. Good to see you, David Lee Sploss. Is he going to eat the whole fucking thing? Mmm, the garlic butter. Yeah. Uh, the crust. Runchy. Looks like the original crust. I suck toes. Mama just killed a man. Put a gun against his head. Pulled the trigger. Now he's dead. Mama, life had just begun. Now I've gone and thrown it all away. All right, sounds good. Um, let's fucking eat some more of this fucking pizza. I 
a lot of the serial killers didn't eat their last meals in the research that Erica, my wife and I were doing earlier in the day. Um, people would order like a lot of stuff and then they just wouldn't eat it. So besides John Martin's scripts, last night we finished up watching the Ted Bundy documentary mini like show thing on Netflix. And um, that was like really entertaining. And I didn't know that he escaped like twice, basically. This dude escaped too from prison. But that John, I mean, uh, excuse me, Ted Bundy thing, when you get into it, it really fucking creeps you out, man. Seeing the images of uh, all of those girls that he killed, especially like this one photograph, really creeped me out, man. So yeah, he targeted people, you know, um, at these airports. He targeted a guy, targeted a guy traveling alone, and convinced to share a hotel room, room five one one, and took a ten thousand volt stun gun on the guy until paralysis, and then bludgeoned him with a hammer. And dismembered the body with a collapsible knife, a professional butcher knife, and knives that he had wrapped in plastic bags, stored in the wardrobe. And as he stole his ID, and he went like to the mall and out shopping, basically. Meanwhile, the body parts were rotting, lugged, and he so he went back to the hotel room. And there's this odor of stinking, rotting body parts. So you gotta get rid of that shit. So I lugged it out of the hotel to the Singapore River. And this was at 5.30 a.m. And a security guard they interviewed, uh, he noticed them go out there. And then he came back 15 minutes later. And, um... He, like, looked the security guard up and down and just, like, went back to his fucking hotel room and um, so they ended up I think searching him and there was the bad smell and then they found like Axe body spray and like I think the people who cleaned the room later also speculated that they smelled like g that disgusting odor that they didn't realize was rotting body parts and then masked with the sweet perfume of like uh, a body spray thing. It looked like uh, some variant of the Axe body spray. And uh, so this story about these body parts found um, in that duffel bag um, became this huge story on, on the island in Singapore. So the police research, when they found the duffel bags, checked out this hotel room. It was under this um, John guy's, Martin fucking guy's um, name. And then he went traveling again at an airport. And then when his name rang up at the airport terminal, they were right there and they arrested him. Apparently. Um... So while he was detained, also, he bashed the glass that was in the room. 
handcuffed, grabbed a piece of the shard of, shard of glass and tried to kill himself, but he was stopped. And um, while they had him detained, they he had a hammer and knives, a stun gun, and a bunch of, you know, like the credit cards. And called with the guy that he killed. But he didn't say anything. And I guess was smart enough to not, like, give himself up. And he just was, like, silent. And uh, they charged him with forgery. I guess due to the stealing of the credit card. Which bought them a week. Then a week lapsed by. And they had nothing, I think, to directly tie him to killing anybody. So he got away. They had to let him go. And, um... He goes to another travel port, like a fucking air, uh, another airport, and there's this British um, mother and son, British Columbia, Canada, uh, mother and son, and they're from British Columbia, Canada, and they were traveling to the Singapore or Bangkok region. Um, met them at an airport, convinced them to go to the hotel. Uh, a hotel and he'd get a like his his story I guess is was like they're all strangers in like a foreign land and he's just a friendly face and um, you know like watching it it just was hard for me to believe that uh, someone would just like go and be like buddies with some dude they just met at an airport out of no out of nowhere um, Let's just check some of the comments again. How many people did he kill? Good question. He killed about maybe up to six. The documentary talked about it confirmed like he killed three people, probably this fourth other person, and um, it was saying he might have killed a couple other people. So, like, The first guy um, he killed at the hotel that he shared a room with, he got detained. Um, and then they had him on nothing, so he got out, went to another airport again, kind of did the same thing to uh, now a couple, two people. Dismembered, it's the same thing. So the second, the British Columbian couple, um, from Canada, um, those people, the mother and son, got a hotel with, with him having a room beside them and a, an agreed upon breakfast. They're all going to have a breakfast, go out for breakfast, whatever it was, that morning. Knocked on their door that morning, came in, hey, how you doing? Um, stun guns, I don't know if it was the mom first or the son first, but stuns guns, one of them, and then uh, presumably like the next one after one of them freaks out, bludgeons them, and uh, takes them both to the bathroom and to cuts their heads off and um, body parts, uh, arms and torso and stuff off, draining their blood into the shower, just like he did the other guy, same thing. And, um, they ended up finding, they, they ended up investigating the disappearance of those people, too. And when they came to the restroom that that happened in, they found, you know, he left a little, some blood splatter, despite his best, um, effort of trying to drain it all down the, um, shower there. But uh, there was more blood splatter than last time. But when I watched it with my wife, you know, I said then, you know, it's two more, two bodies. <clears throat> and not just one body. So, of course, there'll be more blood splatter than the first go-around. Killed one dude. Now it's two people. So, um, let's get some motherfucking more pizza.
Let's dive into a second garlic sauce, shall we? I also have, um, I think this is Parmesan cheese. Let's sprinkle a little bit of that on there. And um, red pepper flakes as well. That's all shitload. Mmm. That's really delicious. All right, so moving on. The name of the hotel that um, the British, I mean the Canadian mother and son stayed at with them was called The Mudes. And then, same thing, he doctored their documents and uh, took their money um, he dropped their dismembered parts near the end and they found the um, badly decomposed heads and torsos near the end um, so His body count wasn't that many people. Serial killer, he killed this one dude, just like that, hotel room, chopped him up, took his credit cards, went on a spending spree. Canadian mother and son, killed them. This is up to three people now. Now I think he killed maybe like at the most, like possibly three more than that. Six, I mean, there's been, like, way worse numbers than that. So, in the documentary, the police people were, like, saying he was, like, a nobody, nobody killer. He built up a reputation of killing these tourists for money. That was all it was for. Um, they ended up arresting him um, he had 12 charges including murder I don't know what all the specific charges were they didn't go over them all um, he requested a top defense to lawyer once he realized how serious like his crimes were and what the hammer was coming down on him so again let's get some more fucking pizza going here parmesan cheese Red pepper flakes. All right, so he requests a top defense lawyer, okay? He's been apprehended. He's killed this one guy that they couldn't get him on. Then they've linked him somehow along the line he's killed this uh, Canadian mother and son separate incidents um, we got him in custody now he needs <clears throat> a top lawyer lawyer comes uh, dude cries when he meets the lawyer for the first time and said he wanted to see his mother and he was really upset and the lawyer was really shocked you know here's this guy stake in this case of he's like murdered some people like hard fucking murderer but the guy cried he broke down and cried and asked for his mom lawyer was taken off uh, guard by that so 
they also called him, they said they called him a compulsive, unskilled liar. He made up a story about a friend who killed um, the, the first person, I believe it was. He said that, or maybe it was the second people. His friend killed and disposed of the bodies. And, uh, and he tried to say the dude that he shared a hotel with grabbed his butt and he was like, I'm not gay, I'm not a homosexual. And then, um, I think, I guess maybe things got out of hand and he was saying uh, it wasn't his fault that he had gotten killed. There was something about, like, so then the guy just left. But it was uh, kind of weird. He was saying, like, the guy touched his butt and he was like, I'm not gay. So that was a story he had made up. And the judge did not believe Martin's account of events and sentenced him to death by hanging. So that's how he died. He was hung, death by hanging, making him the first Briton since Singapore's independence from Britain and Malaysia to be given the death penalty. He is also one of the first Westerners to be executed in Singapore since independence, the first one being Johannes van Damme. He wasn't, all right, so the murder they charged him on was the first murder, and ended up being the first murder, um, and not the Canadian mother and son. He wasn't charged for the murder of the two Canadians, the first guy he was. Also killed a British graduate, so that's the fourth victim I was referring to from earlier, but they couldn't quite tie him down to it. Um, so when the lawyer had stepped in, this top defense lawyer that he was crying to and asking for his mom about, the lawyer also mentioned that, like, um, the police were there to interview him about um, killing the British graduate also. And he was, he was, uh, threw a tantrum and, like, um, beat on the glass and was, like, the, the guy just, like, backed out of the room and was, like, fucking so taken aback by it. I think it was, a, it seemed like an Indian man who was his defense lawyer or some sort of ethnicity similar to that. And, um, he was sentenced to hanging. And leading up to that, he wrote po So he was sentenced to the hanging, and then while he waited to be hung, he wrote poems to his wife, ex-wife, now Maria, that had left him, and uh, we wrote stories and poems about, like, nobody loved him except his uh, family and uh, his wife, Maria. But Maria never came to see him, because uh, she had moved the fuck on, you know? And here's like some like he had three plus victims. His penalty was death, criminal charge, murder. Parents were his Leonard and Gene Scripps. Uh, his other name Simon James Davis, because that was uh, the guy he stole his identity of. The first guy he killed, I think, Simon James Davis. And he's also known as the Garden City Butcher. Cause of death, hanging. He died April 19th, 1996. At age 36. In uh, Chennai, Singapore. Uh, he was born December 9th, 1959. At uh, Letchworth, Hertfordshire, United Kingdom. And then um, here's a quote from his mom about when uh, they, the police department ignored his mom's best intentions to not let him out on leave when he was in prison and he went and escaped. The home office have buried their head in the sand over this. They know full well what if they had 
done what I told them, none of this would have ever happened. I begged them not to, to let him go. I mean, look at this fucking guy. You believe that shit? What are you doing, guy? Killing tourists? Yeah, they gotta lock you up for that. Silly old man. So this is original crust, in case anybody was wondering. And kill people only at airports. Um, well, didn't kill them at airports, he met them at the airport, then they would get a hotel elsewhere, and then he would kill them in a hotel room. Whoop times four. The guy's fucked, yeah, he's so fucked, he's a fucking dumbass, like, he killed people just because he was, like, trying to steal their money. That's not, like, scary. I mean, I mean, it is, it, it is scary, I, I mean, you, that's on you, you're stupid if, like, you fucking took a fucking, took this guy up on his offer to fucking butt up with him in the hotel room. You know, it's one thing fucking Ted Bundy uh, fucking scooping up girls left and right all the fucking across the fucking country and um, sexually like fucking raping them and dumping their bodies off up into the fucking numbers of like 30 some victims and uh escaping prison and having like that fucking what is driving you is the fucking driving force to kill and like get away with killing and killing and murdering young girls going to college this fucking doofus um this was fucking idiot and was like oh i'll try you know like i'll kill some people he was slop job man it, like he fucking, like, had the blood splatter and they caught him, you know? Like, he only killed, like, three or six people. <laughs> fucking stupid. Mima is still my favorite serial killer. LOL, do twins ever realize one of them was unplanned? The ruthlessness of Mima running over that lady. Mima killed that lady. 90 days for woman slaughter. She lost her house for killing that lady and she had to move in with Blake. Danny Boy Tune Tuesday is coming and it's gonna be like better than ever. You know what I'm saying? So you just gotta hang tight. So, 
I'm glad you guys are fucking still enjoying the show, watching me eat this fucking pizza here. And this guy had requested a pizza. Again, not sure what kind of pizza. I think we did find it was from a chain. It wasn't necessarily Papa John's, but... Fuck, man. If this was my last meal, I'd get the Philly pizza from Papa John's because that's what I've been getting lately from Papa John's. And it's a fucking solid pizza. Plus, this guy chose hot chocolate. At this point, not hot anymore, but still very delicious and tasty. Again, that's Hershey's cocoa powder, whole milk, um, sugar, and maybe that's it. It's good is all I know. So, I'll keep running the show, but I, we got a fucking Juggalos Review Foods coming up uh, right after this, so please stay tuned, and I'm glad that you guys are with us tonight on Studio 17, right? So yeah, um, since I'm not good with uh, memory tasks, I'm going to refer to the messages I have to see exactly what time. Juggalos review foods at 10.50, and it's 10.54, so um, I don't want to hold anybody up, so my apologies if I've gone over um, my time slot. Um, Thanks, Jet Wash Outdoors. So, yeah, Blake, um, I guess if you guys are ready to run the fucking Juggalos Review Foods um, next, let me know. Okay, well, they're ready to go. I still have, like, that much pizza left, but that's okay, because this is not Juggalos Review Foods, where you eat the whole motherfucking thing. It's no seconds, and luckily, I'm not a fucking dumbass inmate on death row, so I don't have to have this be my last meal, so I can hold on to that shit for later while I fucking... Uh, enjoy a nice rest of my pizza and kick back, relax and enjoy motherfucking um, Juggalos Review Foods uh, tonight hosted by uh, Not Slim One and his gang, the Iceman and Mima. So catch those motherfuckers out now and they're ready to run. So I'm gonna fucking run off here myself. Thank you guys for fucking having me on Studio 17. Whoop whoop, keep watching all the shows tonight, and f motherfucking, thanks for tuning in once again.